And a major topic that was discussed today at the forum is inequality, both by gender and by income. A panel of experts said that women might very well hold the key to fixing those problems. Women economically are represent an emerging market, and over the next decade, the impact that they will have as they come into the labor force uh, is estimated to be third in size behind the impact that China and India will have over the next decade. So it's an enormously important topic that women have to realize their ec full economic potential. When I was named president, when it was announced, there was a press conference afterwards, and someone asked me, how does it feel to be the woman president of Harvard? And my reaction was, I'm not the woman president of Harvard, I'm the president of Harvard. And by that I meant I didn't have some kind of asterisk after my name that gave me a special dispensation as if I'd hit the home runs in a especially long baseball season. I wanted to be fully the president of Harvard. But after I was named, I got many, many letters from little girls all over the world, young women all over the world, parents of girls all over the world saying, this matters so much to me, to my daughter, that there be a woman president of Harvard. And one young woman wrote to me, in fact, from China, and, said, and she said, now I know I can do anything. So I felt I need to inhabit that expectation and to try to be a model insofar as I'm capable and to reach out to young women all over the world and say to them, aspire, dream, follow your ambitions, let these possibilities become realities for you. There are still significant underrepresentations of women in many areas of power in the world, from leadership of governments to heads of corporations to boards of corporations, where the percentages of women, not just women in the population, but women with excellent educational criteria are not replicated in those jobs. And we need to be very aware of this. We need to make sure we challenge obstacles to women's full participation. And we need to instill in young women and girls the ambitions to feel that they too can and, and should aspire to occupy those kinds of places. The other big topic has been uh, education overall. Um, there's a lot of talk that that's very needed in developing countries. What can schools such as Harvard and the thousands of other universities around the world, what can they do to improve access to higher education? Well, there are many ways in which we try to address that question, both in terms of access within the United States in populations that may not have afforded um, higher education before um, or think that a place like Harvard would be available to them, and as well as reaching out all around the world. One of the things we have done is initiate a very robust financial aid program, both for U.S. students and international students, that assures that anyone who comes from a family that makes less than the equivalent of 65000 U.S. dollars a year will attend Harvard without any parental contribution essentially free. And we want to get that message out and have people understand that if they are students of distinctive talent, we want them and we will support them in coming to us. But of course, only a very small percentage of the world's population is going to end up at Harvard. And so we have a variety of ways we seek to reach out through programs across the world. And recently, through our online course offerings through edX and HarvardX that seek to make Harvard courses available digitally um, in every part of, uh, of the world. Uh, there's some discussion that the cost of education is, is creeping higher and higher every year. It seems to be a foregone conclusion. What would you tell parents of young children who are trying to save for college and also struggling to do so? What advice can you give them? Well, the advice I'd give to them is do save, do aspire, but there's advice for us too. As universities, we must control cost. We must recognize the challenge that these costs present to families, and we must support our financial aid initiatives and also make sure that the increasing cost does not continue to be such a steep, steep line. But we also need to um, say to our governments uh, in the United States, state governments that support public ins um, higher education institution to governments all over the world. Education is a public good and it deserves the support of the society as a whole because it is going to build better citizens, better individuals, a more prosperous society, and a society that's going to be much more successful. And that will help everyone.